All right. Welcome back to uh, the coffee workshop here with uh, Ben Jones from Batter from Bronson Coffee Roasters. Um, we're going to take another look at the confetti uh, filter hack. Do you call it a hack? It's kind of a hack, but I don't know. So, all right. Anyway, for those of you who don't know, confetti filter, um, it's a way to brew with a V60 using a non-V60 filter or just to do something different. You essentially um, fold the filter, cut it into strips of confetti, wad that up, and uh, gently stuff it into the V60 to let it, let it filter. Um, I tried it a few more times over the week just to play around. My very first try was on Monday. Um, and what I, the conclusion I came to is it was kind of fun to play with, and I think everyone should play with it at least once or twice in their lifetime. Um, but it really circumvents the benefits of paper filtration, one of which is that when you're done with your brewer, you grab that filter, you pull it out, and you toss all that stuff right into the compost, give your brewer a little rinse, and then you're set to go. One of the reasons I moved away from French press is because I just... Well, especially out here when I'm making coffee in the workshop, I'm just not set up to clean up uh, loose coffee grounds in a brewer. Um, if I make coffee in the kitchen, I could do that. Uh, anyway, so but the yeah the, the confetti filter leaves a lot of coffee all along the the nice ridges there. Um, commenter on Monday, Bob um, mentioned, and he's 100% spot on uh, from the very beginning. Um, he had the right answer. It says, if you don't have a V60 filter, maybe just grab one of these, you know, standard flat bottoms that you use out of your, uh, your, your, your auto brewer, auto drip brewer. So here is Bob's solution and he's, he's spot on. He's completely right. And this is, uh, this is probably the best way to use a V60 if you are out of filters. Take your round flat bottom filter, fold it in half, go and give it a nice little crease. Um, have two on there and that's okay and then go ahead and give it another fold so you end up with a quarter sized sheet of filter and this would look an awful lot now like a miniature um, crinkled Chemex filter nice thing about the Chemex filter is it'll fit into the V60 so that's an option just grab that first set of filter folds and then when you open that up that gives you a little ice cream cone shaped little filter cap filter filter bucket um, yeah so thank you Bob that was the right answer um, not that there's a right answer but this is a great way to do it um, one of the things you get then you get a single-sided uh, filter this is double because I have two filters in here and then on this side it's three times as fit thick just because that's the way it goes. This will all fit down in here. And from here, I'm just gonna make a V60 using this. So um, you all are still welcome to join me and watch me make my morning coffee. Let's give this a little rinse because that's the best practice. I hope everyone's Friday is moving along nicely. Um, it's been quite a week. All right, so I've right there. Something to be mindful of is that this filter being shorter than the V60, I don't want to overfill it. Um, and I still see there, that just sticks out the bottom. So we're going to drip through. Excellent. I went ahead and weighed out before I came to say hi. I weighed out my 19 grams of drip grind coffee. With the V60, I just run with anything kind of in the middle range of what my grinder will do. It's a good starting point. And of course, our coffee today is the Batter from Bronson Single Origin Colombian Coffee, the Las Brisas, because I adore coffees out of the south of Colombia. 
All right. Any pour over, we just start with a small dose of water just to pre-wet all those grounds, let the water start to soak in. It livens up, uh, kind of kind of activates, if you will, the, the grounds, gets them prepared to receive a dose of water. You want to do it with any method where the water passes through the bed and drips out. Otherwise, this next bit of water, if that, those beans weren't primed, this next bit of water would flow past too quickly and not pick up flavors on their way out because the beans would be too busy letting out gases that would essentially push away the water and then we're not going to get a brew. All right, and here I'm just going to keep adding water, keeping my water level nice and low, especially because this filter doesn't go all the way up. I suppose if you were traveling, well, I'm trying to think of any time you might have your V60, no V60 filters, and um, let's have access to a pour kettle. Uh, I imagine that if you go to, anyway, yeah. Here we're just going to pour some coffee on, or pour some water onto my coffee. Uh, the general recipe that we that, that I like to use, um, using coffee and water with a ratio anywhere from one part coffee to 15 parts water up to one part water and um, about 19 parts. One part coffee, 19 parts water. So kind of a 1 to 15 all the way through a 1 to 19 ratio. Um, now there are times of course where you can do a 1 to 10 or a 1 to 20. Um, but that's pretty far out. If you're not using scales, that roughly equates to for every 10 ounce mug of uh, coffee you're brewing, you're going to want to use, let's see, about three and a half tablespoons. The uh, more or less official official guide is uh, two tablespoons for every six ounces of beverage. Um, most of those little coffee scoops you see are two tablespoon smell of vision would be nice it smells well it's a, it's a lovely coffee it's just uh it's you know i often talk about when i'm hanging out with uh with, with, with folks talking about coffee out of columbia one of the reasons that i suspect i really love it is that um a lot of my early experience with coffee was uh was with folgers and Folgers, of course, is 100% Colombian coffee. Um, this is a much finer coffee, uh, has a lot more interesting flavors, easier to drink. Um, but the base tone of coffees out of Colombia, um, it'll have that Colombian coffee undertone. Um, so I just really enjoy that base flavor. And then from there, um, these coffees will, be, be, be these little bit nicer coffees, First of all, they're better for the growers, so I, I like that. Um, it's going to add some citrus. It's going to add some liveliness to it. Uh, sugars are going to be in there with this nice, nice caramel type sugar. Um, we're going to get maybe a little bit of nougat. All right. This is a delicious smelling cup of coffee. That, that aroma coming off of here is just great. I have my diner mug, and it always comes down to the taste. Mm. You know what? I'm pretty happy with that. I think um, Bob from Monday, you may have tricked me into using the V60 more often because I have plenty of those flat bottom filters. I don't have any V60 filters, but this is really a fine cup of coffee. I might have to go through those filters and make some more V60. All right. So if you, um, if you haven't seen Monday's video, go back to our Facebook page. 
Um, and we have those all archived, some of them even up on YouTube, I believe. Um, and then check out our introduction to the confetti filter. It'll be the, uh, the, the, first, the first post I did from 2021. See what that confetti filter is all about. Try it. It's, uh, it's worth a look just for something to do. If you, uh, maybe you're nothing else going on with a shot or this weekend experiment around. And then keep in mind, this is one of the things I really love about paper filtration. When we're done, I collect the edges of that paper. I turn around and you can see my little blue bucket right here. I've composted it. I'll give this a little rinse, then I'm set. I love not having to clean grounds off of things. AeroPress being an exception because it's uh, so incredibly easy. Just, there we go. All right, so thank you for joining. Again, uh, Batdoor from Bronson Coffee Roasters um, in the mug today. As always, so good to see everybody coming in and hanging out. I better get back to work. I have some work to do. Take care.